A game manager is a way to keep track of the state and flow of your game. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a cute little game set up. We've got our players here and the enemies on the right there with the fire on, on their head. And I can press this button and my team will attack the other team. But as you can see, I can just keep pressing it and overwhelm the enemy and there's not really much challenge to it. So I would like to be able to... Firstly, I would like to show the player a select color screen so that they can choose the color of their unit. And then I would like to only let the player attack when it's their turn and then have the enemy attack when it's their turn and then ultimately either change to a victory state or a lose state. So let's get started. Let's create a new object and let's call it game manager and then a new script by the same name. And as you can see, it's such a common practice that Unity detects the word game manager and if they see it, they'll change the little icon to a cog there. So put that on your game manager object and open it up. Let's start by making a static instance of this game manager so we can easily grab it from anywhere in our game. Just set instance equals this. I'm not going to go too much into the detail of uh, singletons or static instances, but uh, for now, you just need to know that it just allows us to grab it from anywhere. So the whole point of the game manager is to manage the state of your game. So that's what we're going to do first. Create an enum and call it game state. And the first state that we want is the color select screen, isn't it? So this state will be called select color. And then let's say it's the player turn and then the enemy turn. And then after the player turn, enemy turn, player turn, enemy turn, we eventually will want either a victory screen or a lose screen. Now in our game manager, let's create a variable of type game state. Let's call it state. And now we need a way to actually change the state of our game. Let's make a method for that. Public void update game states. And this method will take in a type game state. And we'll just call that the new state. In here, we will set our state equals to the new state. And then we might want to run unique logic depending on the state. So let's create a little switch statement here, which takes in the new state. And if you press Alt Enter, you can just generate the switch levels and it will generate all of those for you. And now in here, we'll be setting the state and then we'll come down here. And then if we need to run specific logic for each of these states, we could simply add a function here. For example, handle select color. And then that will be run when the state is changed to select color. Another thing we need in here is to actually notify anybody who cares or any script that cares that we have in fact changed the state and this is the new state. So we need an event for that. So let's make a public static event of type action and it will take in our new state and we'll call this on game state changed. All right, so now that we've got that event, let's actually trigger it after this. So we'll do that and we'll send in our new state. So this is actually warning me. It's basically just saying, uh, if I trigger this and nobody has subscribed to it, I'm going to throw an error at you, uh, a null error. So you can protect against that by just saying, has anybody subscribed? If so, invoke this function, just like that. So now that we've got that, when the game starts up, let's actually call our first state change. Let's say update game state and we'll send in our first state, select color. Okay, so easy as that. Now this is not actually doing anything right yet because we haven't actually attached any uh, state specific logic to it. Uh, so what we need to do first is show uh, the player the select color screen. So this event down here, 
let's let's hook into that event. So over in my menu manager, I've got a reference to that color select panel, which I showed you at the start of the video. So what we need to do is subscribe to this game manager on state changed event. So in our menu manager, in our awake function, let's subscribe to it. Game manager on state changed plus equals, which is how we subscribe to events in C sharp. And let's create a new method. Now it's good, uh, it's good practice to always unsubscribe from an event uh, when you're finished with it uh, to avoid memory leaks and so on. So on, uh, on destroy event, when this class gets destroyed, we will, instead of subscribing to it, we will unsubscribe from it, just like that. So now when game manager calls this, calls this on state changed, we're going to run this function. So let's change that to state. And basically all we need to do here is if it's, if the state is select color, we will show our panel. Otherwise it's always going to be hidden. So an easy way to do that is just color select panel that active. And if state equals select color, then we're going to show it. Otherwise hide it. Okay. So now when we start our gamer, it shows our color select screen, which doesn't actually do anything at the moment. So let's do something about it. On our color select, we can I'll just move my face over here so you can see. You'll see on these on the button events, I have hooked into the unit manager select color function. So blue or red. Okay. So over on our unit manager. I've got this function called select color. It takes in the color and basically it will just say to all of our player units, here's a red material, here's a blue material. Pretty simple. Um, you can just ignore that though. Now, once the, once the player has actually selected this color, we're done with the select color state. So now we can say game manager instance update game state. And what was our next state? It was the player turn. So let's do that. Let's send in player turn. So now it's going to come down here again. We're going to set the new state. It's going to come to player turn. We might need to handle some player turn logic here. So let's create a new function. Just like that. And then it's going to perform that logic and then come down here again and trigger the state changed event again. So what do we need to do here? Well, it would be nice to only allow the player to actually press this button when it's on his turn. Uh, we don't want him to press it when the enemy's turn is playing. That would be unfair. So in, in my uh, menu manager, I've got a reference to that attack button, as you can see there. So in our menu manager, uh, we've actually already subscribed to this event. So now we can say, we need to actually change this attack button to an actual button. So let's do that button, attack button, and we'll remove that reference. And now we only want to allow the users to press the button when it's the player turn. So we can do attack button, interactable equals, uh, and we just say if the state is equal to player turn. Also, when the player actually presses the attack button, we want to uh, then take it to the next uh, state. We don't want the player to be able to continuously press the button. So as you can see here, I've got this uh, attack button pressed and on the attack button, I've just got a button trigger and the menu manager attack pressed. So when the, when it's pressed, I'm just, I'm just telling the unit manager to tell all the players to attack. And then I will say the game manager um, instance, update game state. And now let's say it's the enemy's turn in our game manager. Now that we go into the enemy turn, let's create some logic for that handle enemy turn. Uh, now. In here, let's actually make this an async function. 
and we'll just add a little bit of uh, artificial wait time just so that the player units have a time to attack. This is uh, not great design, I'm just doing it for the sake of the tutorial. And we'll just do a task delay. Let's wait for about, actually let's wait for about two seconds. Now our enemies can attack. So let's say unit manager instance attack and we'll say the enemy faction. Let's add another artificial wait time there to allow the enemy to attack. And then here we should then find out if the all the enemies are dead or all the players are dead. So a good way to do that would be a another state here and we'll just call it decide. And we can add a new case. Handle decide. Now, uh, this is not the most performant way to do it, but uh, for the sake of the tutorial, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab uh, all the units, find objects of type unit. I'll say if units any uh, unit of faction. Basically, just looking for are there any units of enemy? And if not, if no enemy units, we'll say update game state and we'll say win, victory, because there's no more enemies. Else if, now this is a very sloppy way of doing it, but just, just for the sake of the tutorial, uh, if there are no players left, then we'll say, well, you lost. Otherwise, let's update the game state back to the player turn. Let's also add an artificial weight here, just so that we can see uh, the decide, or else it's just gonna flash by our eyes way too fast. All right, so let's see what we have made. A red team, attack, enemy turn, over to decide, back to player turn. Oh, look at that damage. Ooh. Oh, it's not looking good. Not looking good. One versus three. At least I took one of them out. And I lose. So there you go. I showed you how to create a game manager, a fundamental of game management. I showed you how to run specific logic for each state and trigger an event which other parts of your game logic can hook into and uh, run their own logic. Um, a game manager is perfect for keeping all of your game flow all in one place, keeps it neat, organized and easy to debug. So if you learned something, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you next time.